Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to Kenny Brown's Cars and Coffee. I'm Carrie Southworth, along with co-host Brad Grissom. Brad Grissom. Brad Grissom. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hello, everyone. So nice to see everyone today. Oopsie. I guess we, oops, now we're going to gym. Okay, can we start this over? Okay, we're going to start over, guys. Ready? Here we go. You need to remove Jim. Okay, that. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to start this over. You ready? Good morning. Welcome to Cars and Coffee with Kenny Brown. I am co host Carrie Southworth along with Brad Grissom. Hello, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> We have a great show lineup today. I hope you enjoyed that. We always like to add a little comedy with our technology. So that was the hopefully the technology glitch for the day. Um, but anyway, we have a great show uh, today. We have, uh, as you know, track and car show season is coming up. And what we have, who we have on the show today is Jim Donato from uh, Donato Trailers. And he is going to present a mini masterclass similar to what we uh, teach in the Speed Therapy Academy. And he's going to be talking about sway control today. It's a very interesting subject, subject and you'll learn a lot. Again, this is a Speed Therapy Academy mini masterclass, just to kind of give you a little taste of what we, we do in the Speed Therapy Academy. Um, we also have a little bit of Kenny Brown memorabilia with us, with, the, with us today. That's part of it. And we have a, our weekly giveaway, too. So let me show you what we're giving away this week. So here is our, this is our track bags. It says Kenny Brown on it. It's, this is a 19 inch bag. It's $29.95 on our website. We also have the smaller one. This is really good for your uh, tire temperature gauge when you're going to the, the pit area. Um, and it's really high durable um material and you can put things in it they're they're really nice and this one is 22.95 so a 13 inch bag and that's the same bag they get when they order the trackside tool kit is that correct yes this is a bag that comes with the trackside tool kit and uh brad why don't you tell them what's in the trackside tool, tool kit right so in the in the trackside tool kit we have a, a really nice um joe's racing tire pyrometer um, which has got a, a really cool probe. It's kind of got a, a 90 degree handle probe uh, scenario. I don't have one I can uh, show to you right now, but we, we do sell them on our website. It's a, a digital pyrometer. It's, it's really nice. Um, it's, it's designed to, um, it's, it's designed for more of an ergonomic type of use. Um, so people that have used traditional tire pyrometers will appreciate this because it, it's it, uh, it has a handle and the probe is kind of bent so it's a lot easier to stick um, the tires than a traditional probe which is just a one giant long um, you know probe I guess and then um, we also include a um, really nice high uh, quality tire pressure gauge uh, there's a, a shot of the pyrometer so it's nice it's digital um, it's it's high quality um, it comes with a nice rubber outer um, shell that um, surrounds the plastic enclosure itself. So if you drop it, um, the probe, again, is, is super nice. Um, just simply runs on batteries. And then the um, tire pressure gauge, uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. So it's uh, zero to uh, however many PSI. I think some of them are 60 PSI, some are 80 PSI. Um, it does come with a, uh, two different chuck styles. It comes with a pressure release valve built in. Um, it does have a rubber um, housing over the gauge itself. So again, if you drop it or anything like that, it's protected. Uh, here we go, solo layout, there you go. And so it is a, a zero to 60 PSI, I think, right, Carrie? Yeah, uh, yes, zero to 60. So anyway, that's that's what comes. That's not what we're giving away today. Is that we just kind of went on to that. But uh, this is our trackside bag, and that's the, all, all that comes in it on the website, along with uh, Kenny's uh, tire temperature sheet. So uh, we give away a tablet of that with it as well. So for today, does it come with a clipboard? It comes with a clipboard yes. too, doesn't it? 
Yes, it comes okay. with a clipboard. No pen included. So we have to. We need, to, we need some kindergarten pens. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, I want to show you, Brad, you want to put me to full screen because I want to show what, how big this is. And then we'll stop talking about this. But I, we are so excited about these bags. But as you can see, I have Kenny's helmet in here, and there's still extra room. So you won't be able to fit your driving suit in here, but it's a good mini size uh, helmet bag to bring to the track, I think. So it looks like you could, fit your, you could fit your gloves and your, your yes. shoes in there, oh, probably. Definitely. No. Yeah, yeah, definitely gloves and shoes. So it's really nice, uh, nice size to, to bring to the track with you. So we are giving this away uh, for a weekly sweepstakes, less the Kenny's helmet. So anyway, <laughs> so let's see who's who's with us today. So we have Jorge is with us, Fred Francher, good to see you, Joe Johnson. There's a few people. It looks like Brian West um, is with us as well. Uh, Jay Meyer, good to see you. Uh, he's on the road to Cleveland to Summit Racing Autorama. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, let's see who else. Phil Jolly, good to see you. We're going to have Phil Jolly's uh, car here shortly. I think it's coming at the end of April. He's doing a nice little installation on his car, getting ready for the track and street. Um, there's a few more people on here as well. Also, I know my cousin Brian is on. I want to put a reach out to him. Uh, hello, Brian. Good to see you. And so we'll just keep going on and on with our show. So Michael Bowman's here. Those bags will make a good Cars and Coffee detail bag as well. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yes, Cars and Coffee. Yeah. That's a that's great a, idea. Yeah. They're really high quality. I don't know if you could see that or not. But anyway, that is our free giveaway with the trivia question today. And I'm first. then I think next we're going to go into our memorabilia. We don't have a lot of memorabilia today because we are – uh, really going to be focusing on our mini master class today with Jim Donato. And my lovely assistant is not here. So anyway, um, I think you all know my lovely assistant. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to talk about is Kenny's uh, boyhood hero, hero was Jim Clark or Jimmy Clark. And this is, a uh, I'm not going to take this off the wall, but this is his win at in 1965 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, this is one of Kenny's pieces of art. Uh, this is another one of his pieces of art um, right here. So I, I don't know if you can see that. And it, hold it yeah, up. Yeah, it looks great. Though. Isn't it cool? That There's is quite a great of it, but Yeah, I know. Well, you can see the whole showroom and all, all the lights. So anyway, there we, go. there we go. So that is Jimmy Clark. And I don't know, uh, do many of you know much? Of, what did you say, Brad? Is that his glove too? Yes, that's his glove as well. So uh, that's uh, one of our customers gave a number of these prints and uh, to Kenny uh, years ago. And it's in his beloved uh, uh, artwork collection automotive artwork. So anyway, Jimmy Clark was uh, Kenny's boyhood hero, and he watched him at Watkins Glen, him and his friends. I, I think they, I don't think they paid for their tickets. I think they climbed up on a tree and Jay Meyer could, that's his home track. So he could probably tell tell you a little bit more about, uh, there's some big old oak tree there that they climbed up and watched Jimmy Clark uh, win at Watkins Glen. And I'm not sure what year, I think that was in 66. So uh, that's his boyhood hero. And I think part of the reason is, is because he's Scottish. And if you've been with our show for a while, you know that Ken has a, a strong uh, Scottish heritage along with drinking scotch. He has a great scotch collection as well. So anyway, uh, Jimmy Clark won the championship titles in 63 and 65. And he drove for Lotus and did a great job for him. He on. Fortunately, he perished early in a crash in an F2 car in 1968. So anyway, that's uh, Kenny's boyhood hero. Okay, let's move on to the next little bit of information that we have. Um, I wanted to tell you, we're going to have the trivia question in just a couple of minutes. So I'll, I'll share that. I'm, I'm kind of stretching what I just talked about. Um, so anyway, we have a lot of questions on our 15 minute calls. We do 50, free 15 minute consults and uh, we have a lot of questions like, well, you know, what, what can I ask? What can, you know, what, what is, what is it all about? 
Well, the 15 minute consult, um, you can call in anything. So we, we have a great tech staff here. Kenny did a great job training us. And so we can answer the majority of tech questions you have on your Mustangs. So we, we answer questions. The other thing we do, and people love this, is we create build plans. So if you don't really know where to start on your car, uh, we create a step-by-step -step build plan after we talk to you. So we'll find out um, a little bit about what you're, what you're looking for, um, what your driving ambitions, is it street car, street performance, is it track, are you going to eventually go race with it? Um, you know, as a part-time, just a couple of tracks, track events a year. Um, and we take all this information and how much experience you've had driving in the past as well. We take all that experience and uh, information, we put it into a, a physical sheet that you can print out of your computer electronic. And it's a bill plan and we do step one, step two, step three, step four. And how many of you people that have had build plans out there know what the first few steps are? Uh, Speed Therapy Academy people should know this. Where does Kenny always start? This is not the, the trivia question, but it is to win the, the bag. But it is a good trivia question. Um, so I think people can answer that. I will say it right now because people have probably typed it in already. Right. Chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes. That's where Kenny always starts. And then he goes into cooling, safety, and uh, power is one of the later things that he adds. You don't have a can't get the power to the ground if your car doesn't handle well or, or have good traction. So anyway, Brad, before we start uh, with Jim, I want to do a giveaway on this. Okay, so, I just want to say hi to Wayne Jones, who's uh, joining us oh. from Kansas today. That and we do, have a Facebook, we do have a Facebook user who got the, um, uh, the five uh, critical steps to building the ultimate performance car, chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes. Uh, that's Facebook user. Um, and so maybe that's Brian West. Um, that's it could be. They're, they're, they're viewing on the um, Speed Therapy Society Facebook group uh, page where, where we're streaming live today as well as our uh, Kenny Brown corporate uh, Facebook page, Kenny Brown Performance. And we're also streaming live on YouTube. So if you're viewing on um, any of those platforms with us today live, um, please give us a thumbs up, a, a like, a heart-shaped wrench. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, uh, click the bell for notifications. And if you're viewing on the Speed Therapy Society Facebook group page, we cannot see your name. Uh, unless you post it like Herstfer did, who's uh, oh. viewing live today as well, and he is in Bulgaria. Um, and then we have another Facebook user who's not Brian West. If Brian West is out there, um, I didn't see him in the chat. Yeah, he, he is out there. So yeah, I, wanted to wish him, I think he had a birthday this week, so I wanted to wish him a happy birthday as well. Oh, great. Happy birthday, Okay, so I, I got my housekeeping in, like, real quick there you under just the radar. just snuck it in, snuck it in on me. Okay, so we're going to do the giveaway early today because we have a mini master class coming up. And, um, so okay, but, and, and we do, we do, we did have, we were going to do some internet finds. And so I found all this cool stuff on the internet um, in my spare time. Um, and, and so we may share a couple of those as well, but we might, we'll do it at the end of the show if we are going to share them because we want to um, be sure we give Jim appropriate time to get through an important uh, topic. So um, anyway, Carrie, I'll, I'll go back to you. Okay, sure. So this again is our uh, weekly giveaway. And the trivia question is, who was Kenny's childhood racing hero? <laughs> Again, who was Kenny's childhood racing hero? So that's the question. And <laughs> Brad, you know, you, you're disqualified. You're disqualified. So, oh, you got your Kenny Brown shirt on. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's see who was the first one. Joe Johnson. Boy, this will go really nice with your dark horse, don't you think? Put your helmet in there. Congratulations, Joe Johnson. We're winning that. So we are going to get on to our mini mass master class. And uh, the reason I call it mini is in the Speed Therapy Academy uh, that we offer, we have a master class. So we uh, call in industry experts from all over the uh, industry. 
and they come in and teach master classes and go in depth about uh, different subjects. So today we have Jim Donato from Donato uh, Trailers, and he is an expert, and you'll see soon on trailers, trailer setup, and anything about trailers. So we're going to introduce him in just a moment. Um, but I mean, it's you'll really like this. So the Speed Therapy Academy master classes. Uh, this is a mini master class. He'll be sharing a lot of technical information, and he has a whole presentation set up for you. Uh, you can ask questions during. Uh, his presentation and we'll probably answer them afterwards. So get your questions ready. And I'm going to introduce uh, Jim Donato right now. So Jim. Huh. Oh, he's not on. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Good, Hi. To, good to see you today. And good to, we're... Yep, good to see you guys. Thanks again for the invite and thanks to all of you for tuning in. Um, you know, I've developed a long working relationship with Kenny Brown and Carrie and Brad and and you guys got the best right here. These are the best Mustang people and just a fantastic organization. So a little shout out to, to you guys there and thanks again. So well thank you Jim. I so appreciate that. We we try our darndest and the the only people that we have on our show are uh, high quality vendors and suppliers of people. So uh, Jim is one of those. Um, so Jim, I wanted before Brad and you start your presentation, I wanted to ask you just a couple of questions because I think it's some people have seen you on the show before, but I think it's good to give a little bit of background of who you are, because I know that you you have such knowledge in trailers, but you don't have it just in trailers, but you also have it in race cars, loading race cars, uh, low cars. So can you give us a little bit of background how you started and how you sure. got into this industry? Yep, sure, absolutely. My family started in the car business uh, in 1958. My father started in the AMC Rambler uh, American Motors dealership. We also had Fiat, Alpha, um, MG Triumph, all of all the little imports, and then Jeep. And from 1958 on, in fact, I am still in the same building. So I'm kind of like grew up in the grew up as a car guy, sweeping the floors and and playing in the gas oil and grease and uh so I, i'm a mechanic and done all i'm a i am a vintage racer i race a 62 austin healy i've ran a, I, i've driven mustangs in champ car series in different series i've ran corvettes in different series and just a all-in-all -all car guy like the rest of us i'm sure that uh, when i get my blood pressure checked it's more like getting my oil pressure checked so like the rest <laughs> Of us. So that's a little bit of background about me, just a lifelong car guy and been in it forever. And uh, trailer industry, I've been in for quite a few years. Um, all my experience at going to the track has bled over into the trailer industry. So understanding what everybody needs when they're taking their race car to the track, as I had to do with mine, um, helps a lot. And also in the design, uh, my engineering background comes out a lot when I start doing too much math, but that's okay too. Um, it all works out. Um, and, and just like uh, Kenny Brown Performance, when we do a trailer for a customer, we start with a build plan. And it's iconic that we do the same series and this, we look at the same thing from the ground up. So kudos to Kenny. And like I said, they're, our, your guys' team, the build plan is proven and works. Uh -huh. and it even works in my industry. Yeah, so, and that, that's uh, our thing. So, yep, that's for sure. And our, our um, philosophies are aligned. I know that. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. reason we have you on. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to have uh, Jim and Brad start the master class. And again, this is Speed Therapy Academy mini master class with guest expert Jim Donato. So, enjoy. Okay. So, everyone. Um, as Carrie mentioned before, um, we do our Speed Therapy Academy program, which is phenomenal. Um, it's a 16 week um, program that Kenny started uh, several years ago. And as part of the Speed Therapy Academy, we have a whole series of master classes that go on during that 16 weeks. So not only is it 
um, an intensive learning program where we go through not only chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, and brakes, um, but we go through aerodynamics, we go through driver coaching, we go through drivetrain, we go through engine, we go through transmission, we go through rear end. Um, when we do suspension, it's extremely in depth. It's two weeks of intensive learning. And um, the master classes um, fit in and kind of coordinate with whatever that week's um, curriculum is. So if we're, um, and one of the things we talk about is race trailers and how to set your rig up um, at the racetrack so that when you get there, you look a little bit more organized and professional. And, um, and the, these master classes are, are super intensive. And so what you're going to see um, today is just a, a sampling, maybe 20% of what you get when Jim does his full master class for our, our students. And, um, and Jim has, has been a, a really valuable asset um, over the course of the last three years as we've been doing this program. And a lot of you who are viewing today know him and have actually been through his master class. But um, today we wanted to talk about the subject of uh, specifically trailer sway control. And um, Jim is an expert uh, in that. He deals with those customers um, every day, advises them, and, um, and he's put together a great presentation. So uh, Jim, if you want, um, I can go ahead and pull this up and we can get started. Does that sound good to you? Absolutely, yeah. We got a lot, of, lot to go through in a short period of time, so. Yeah, okay. So let me uh, just share my screen here and we'll get on uh, to it. We've got a couple of little videos, Jim. I'll let you explain those as we get into it, okay? Sure. Well, the first thing, it, it's kind of ironic that today uh, here in central Indiana that we have had storms and a lot of wind blowing and a lot of issues like that. So these videos that Brad's gonna play just give some demonstration on some models of weight distribution in the trailer and then the effects of sway on tow vehicles and how it works. Um, so if Brad, if you want to play the first one. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> As we all know, sway is the biggest thing that is a problem with tow trailers. And this first one here talks about some weight um, and how the, and how the, the weight of how the trailer is loaded will af will also affect this um, properly loaded trailers are easier to pull and easier to drive now within our app, we're going to talk about the force of it and how that affects all that. <clears throat> but this is a, a quick demonstration on on tongue weight, which a lot of people can get confused about we have a little bit more information coming on tongue weight but as you can see, proper tongue weight keeps the vehicle in control. And then if you offload or have too light of tongue weight, then that creates a problem, as you see there. <clears throat> now, there's several factors that will, uh, that will contribute to sway. But as we all know, sway is the most, it's the most frightening thing when you're pulling a trailer. And it is the number one cause of most accidents that happen. Um, again, as you can see through this demonstration, how fast things can get out of control. So being prepared for this is, is, not, is super important for everybody towing any type of trailer. And then this is a little bit of different hitches. So we'll go to the next video, which is the most favorite from the Kenny Brown performance team because it is a Mustang in the in the video pulling a trailer. And see if Brad will get that rolling. <clears throat> and this will talk also about how fast things can get out of control with improper tongue weight. Now bear in mind most all of us are using a tandem axle trailer. So the tandem axle trailer will also help with some of this um, because it will track a little bit better, but the same results will happen, whether it's a single axle or a tandem axle trailer. 
as you can see from the difference in tongue weight. Pretty cool video for everybody to see. So Brad, we'll flip, we'll get into the meat of this now that we all know what this looks like and feels like. All right, here we go. Yep, so like I said, sway is the number one cause of accidents. And it's also the biggest reason that most people give up on pulling a trailer or get so disgruntled that they're like, I, I just can't do it anymore. So a few factors contribute to it. Side forces on the trailer, location and pivot point uh, that the trailer's attached to the tow vehicle, bow wind or passing traffic, uneven roads, grooved roads like you see in construction, and then improperly loaded trailer with too little or too much tongue weight, as we can see here. So the most important thing is to, is to have a plan, just like your build plan with your race car is have a good plan for your trailer and towing it and it's setting your trailer up to pull it with all of your gear in it because we all bring a car tools tires coolers canopies chairs all the stuff we drag back and forth and it all adds to what's going in the trailer so we'll flip to the next one brad This is a little thing on the force of wind because wind is our single biggest contributor. So a 20 foot trailer, as you see, we, we put together here, 20 foot trailer has eight foot sidewall and the majority of your car haulers will be at eight, a minimum of eight feet off the ground. That's 160 square feet on one side. Um, so 30 mile an hour wind makes 2.3 pounds of square foot force. So, that gives us, as you see in the equation here, 368 foot-pounds of force for a 30-foot trailer, it's 552. And note that the weight of the trailer is not a factor in any of this. And your typical pickup truck that's 18 feet long and 6 feet tall, or give or take, has 108 square feet of surface area. And again, so that's 248 foot-pounds of force. So the big difference is the unequal force on both vehicles or both, both items or both vehicles, you want to say, that's the root of the cause of, of our sway. Because no matter, no matter what you do, you have those two unequal acting forces on both, both vehicles. So the trailer, when the trailer is swaying, the trailer is actually going faster than the tow vehicle. And it's simple math and physics. When it starts to go back and forth, and you can think about this, if you going back and forth down the straightaway on the racetrack, you're actually straight away. If those two, if those two vehicles are doing that, then the trailer is traveling farther, which means it's traveling faster at the same rate of time. So that's the biggest contributor to sway is the fact that these two forces are unequal. Now, rather than continue to bore you with math and physics and amplitude and all that, we'll charge forward here to the next slide. So the, what most of us use is a sway control device. And the other thing we'll have is our trailer brake control device. And our typical trailer brake control device is either a separate one or integrated one. Brad's got a couple pictures of those. And those are essential to safe pulling also. Now the DOT in, in today's world, the Department of Transportation, all double axle trailers are required to have brakes on both axles. And we'll get into the types of brakes in another class, but um, you'll have brakes on both axles on tandem axle trailers. And those are your typical control devices. This is kind of a recap for most of us. Uh, we're very familiar with this. So charging on forward, Brad. Um, then a little bit of math on proper tongue weight and loaded. Proper tongue weight is 10 to 15% of the total trailer weight. So if you have 2,500 pound car and 
uh, or a 2,500 pound trailer, a 3,000 pound car, uh, or a 4,000 pound car, you should have 10 to 15 percent of that. So you should have somewhere between 650 and 975 of tongue weight. Too little tongue weight can create a problem, as you saw in the videos, and too much tongue weight can a problem. And that problem is the front end of the tow vehicle is too light, so you have lost steering input. So you'll understeer just like your race car, you'll drive yourself right off of a curve or you'll go straight instead of turning. So there's a few rules of thumb that we can use to measure that. Not everybody has a scale or a way of me measuring tongue weight or want to go through that painstaking uh, process. So the, the general rule of thumb is measure from the ground to the, a, specific point on the back of your truck or tow vehicle. I always tell people to measure to the bottom or top of where your hitch plugs into the back or your receiver. A lot of pickup trucks, that's 15, 18, 19 inches. Now this is with no load on the back of the truck. And then hook the trailer up without any of your weight or sway control and measure how much the back of the truck drops. If it drops one or two inches or three quarters of an inch or a half an inch or four or five inches, that kind of will gauge you about how much weight you have in the, in the back of your truck. So on half ton pickups, generally between, between four and 900 pounds, and I know that's a little bit of a range, a standard half ton pickup will drop anywhere from one to two and a half inches. So if, let's say, as the average rule of thumb, it's a two-inch drop, that's going to tell you you've got around 750 pounds tongue weight in the back of the truck. Obviously, you can get bags of salt or whatever, measure it out, and have your own calculated formula. Again, rules of thumb. There's no, no wrong answer for some of this. Um, some Jim, of the other you... things that we want to be sure we check on is proper tire pressures. And proper tires and proper tire pressures on the tow vehicle. If you have real soft, if you're using a, a light SUV um, of any make, model, or brand, and you've got more soft rear tires that are more for comfort driving, those sidewalls can be very soft. It gives you a perfect ride when you're not towing, but it can also contribute to a little handling characteristics when you're towing a vehicle because the back of the vehicle itself isn't stiff to the ground or the sidewalls will roll. Uh, also making sure that the trailer, trailer wheels are properly inflated. Most of the problem people have with a lot of blowouts or flats on trailers is the fact that the tire pressures on the trailers are not set properly. Um, and then you also, you, anytime you're towing, you want to be absolutely sure that the trailer brakes are working and all the suspension is working and tracking correctly on the trailer. Now, all of this contributes to the control. So now we're going to get into a little bit more of what to do, I think. We'll come up with the next slide, Brad. Yeah, so Jim, I um, wanted to kind of show some images and have you go through and, and kind of describe. We've got some different, sure. um, we've got different hitch um, layouts um, on various different vehicles. So I think we have an Explorer, we have a Super Duty, Sure, uh, sure. We've got a Ram, and we've uh, even got a GMC Sierra, I think. So um, yep. I'm going to move forward a little yep. bit here in the slides. Um, yep. And so th this, okay. I think. Um, yep. Let me, uh, I'll go through this with them real quick. So there's several types of weight and weight control. Now, the, what you're seeing here is what's called a friction device and how it's set up. Now, the friction device is designed to dampen it. So the sway back and forth is dampened with the, the friction or sway device. This is a very tried and true, used for years. We've had, this has been on the market for, uh, I can't imagine, 20 plus years minimum. Um, works well. It's typically designed for a steel trailer. It does have to have its own attaching point to one of the, the uh, tubes in the front of the trailer. Um, and then you see the, the weight control is done with the springs and the chain. Again, this is an, a, a very, very tried and true system that's been around for a long time. This system is, there's a couple things that people don't realize about that system. 
and one of them is on the on the other on the um, friction devices it should be removed to be when you back up and again we'll get into more of that in the master class but there's some more stuff about that now what you see here is a recurve now these have been on the market for a little while but they are uh, a new type of system that uses um, a a sway control device that's built into the knuckle head of the hitch these work very well also and they're attached at the trailer to a specific point um, again a very tried and true recurve this is uh, an, a this is the top of the recurve system as you see there's no swinging no hanging chain or anything and that top point is a solid point and then the, the sway is controlled in the head of that device um, again very good system one of many that are out there and this is called a recurve um, so we'll go to the next one this is a oh that one that's a Reese um, that's a 66550 Reese that uses the material the, the parts that attach to the trailer clamp onto the frame no holes are drilled to the frame which is what we recommend on all aluminum trailers don't drill any holes in the frame but this device uses like brake shoe material on the part hooked to the trailer and then the bar the friction and the sway control comes from the friction of the bar onto those two onto that surface that brake shoe material surface on the uh, that's attached to the trailer. Um, again, that's a Reese system, very good system. And we'll go to the next one. I think we've got. There we go. Okay, that this is uh, this is another Reese system, uh, just a little different design. The bars come from underneath, but the friction, uh, the friction or the sway control acts on the bottom of the coupler on the trailer itself. Um, and this is another Reese system. This system, that's the 66560 with the brake shoe material. As you can see how there's different setups and how the, the height of those vary from different trailers. The idea is also to have the trailer as level as possible and the truck as level as possible so the load's the same. This particular one, this is the Equalizer brand one. Again, very, very popular, a very, very good one, a very tried and true and been on the industry for years. Equalize, this is an Equalizer brand. So as the pictures show, there's several different types, just like there is cars and everything else. There's several different manufacturers out there that have a form of integrated weight and sway control um, that helps both with the weight distribution and also with the sway control and then there's a little recap of some of the things that we talked about earlier on uh, keeping all this stuff in control and making sure that you measure the drop of your trailer and keeping your trailer level uh, with the tow vehicle from what we call a static point um, and here's a quick demonstration of too much tongue weight, proper tongue weight, and too little tongue weight. Now you can actually use the weight and sway control to create a negative effect if you put that much tension on the bars. And again, that will create the back of the truck light. Um, so setting all this up and making sure that the trailer is level and the tow vehicle is level, vastly important to keeping it in control and keeping the sway in control. Now, proper tongue weight, and as we discussed a little bit, too little tongue weight can lead to sway from side to side. Too much tongue weight can cut down, can, can put too much pressure on the rear wheels, causing them to wave, but also make a difference in the front steering and make it too light. So your tongue weight should be between 10 and 15% of total trailer. So this is where we say a 2,000 pound trailer with 2,000 pounds of cargo, 4,000 pounds should have 400 to 600 pounds tongue weight. Always err a little on the heavy side. 12% is always a really good number for the majority of us. Um, and it's not hard to get there when we start putting spare parts and toolboxes and things in the front of our trailers. Um, again, 
take a step back and just look at the trailer and see how it's leaning and see how things look level. Just use a level eye and a good sense of how, the, how things are looking. And you can tell from that as a general rule of thumb of where to go. And again, we get into a lot more of this stuff in a master class. Um, but there's so much information that you want to take in con into consideration when you're doing and getting things set up, when you're doing your, your setups and getting ready to go to the track. Um, and again, there's a little quick formula for that. And this is how you actually can calculate uh, actual tongue weight. Um, and you can use a bathroom scale. There's several different matters. You can all local um, scrap yards or wherever where they have full uh, full scales and set the tongue on the scale and see if they'll do it for you. Some freight some freight places that do freight service, they'll have a heavy enough scale that'll go over a thousand pounds that will uh, they can roll it out and you can actually get that that trailer tongue weight. There's also trailer tongue scale weights that you can purchase. Um, again, but for most of us, uh, that's a little overkill. Um, if you're doing it more professionally and you're pulling every weekend and you're pulling thousands of 10,000 miles a year, pulling a trailer, it's worth having that checked and to know where you're at with all that. Um, and then if you don't have proper tongue weight, then obviously you want to adjust your car back and forth. And we, when we design trailers for you guys, we all, and those of you that have purchased trailers from me, I always say, listen, we're going to leave six inches or so of leeway so that if you have to roll the car forward or backward, we've got some movement in there to balance the tongue weight and balance your trailer. So that, that, Weight distribution allows for you to go forward or backward with whatever you're, you're towing in it as far as your car. And then bear in mind that a lot of, I have a lot of customers that will also forward load the car and then put a lot of gear on the rear of the trailer to balance it out. So there's no hardened rule of thumb that says all of your toolboxes and all of your tires have to go in the front of the trailer. Sometimes you can actually roll the car forward and then put all that gear at the rear of the trailer. And all these things will help you help you hit your proper tongue weight. So what most of us use for sway control is what we saw back on those pictures of the weight and sway control devices. Oh, you want to back up one slide? There we go. How do we can now? How do how do we control it? There it is. Most of us use the weight and sway control device. Be sure that they're pro set, pro set, properly set up, leveled, and, and follow the directions of whatever brand that you purchase, whether it's Reese, Equalizer, Curt, um, no matter what, the, the Recurve, whatever brand you like, follow the directions uh, that they give you to set it all up so it's working, so it's all set up properly. And then that's what they look like as the pictures we show. We should. And Tim, so so what what about um, tires? I've got a little chart, which was the next thing in the slide. Um, do you want to talk about that for just a second, since tires kind of play a role a little bit in, in sway yes. as well? Absolutely. And I got to thank Brad for keeping me on target because sometimes I get to waving off off course a little bit. So I appreciate that, Brad. Um, Trailer tires, one thing about trailer tires is trailer tires are not DOT rated. Trailer tires are for trailers. They have a little heavier sidewall. So don't put, I don't advise anybody to put passenger car tires on a trailer. Put trailer tires on your trailer because they are designed for the trailer. And as we talked about a little bit before, there are several different factors for sizes and, and ratings, as you can see from this. But you always want to be sure that you you inflate the tires to within 10% of what the tire states on it, because the tire pressure that's stated on the tire will be for maximum load on the tire. Even if you feel you're underloading the trailer, and, and I'll use this for a quick example, if you have a 10,000 GVW trailer and you have, and the trailer weighs 2,500 pounds and you're putting just a 2,000 pound car in it, and you're barely at 50% of that, 
you still want to inflate the tires to within 10% of what they say. You're not going to achieve a smoother ride on the trailer by lowering the pressure in the trailer tires uh, to make it a softer ride for, for your cargo or for your car. What will happen is you could possibly overheat those tires because they're underinflated and then you have chronic blowouts or flats. Most trailer tire blowouts come from either overinflated or underinflated trailer tires or simply trailer tires that have exhausted their lifespan and they're dry rotted and cracked and they just fail from age. Um, and trailer tires are subject to the UV of the sun more than anything because they sit outside a lot, so that UV will break them down also. So now tires on your tow vehicle real quick is, again, another important factor. I've had customers that have had soft sidewall, tire, soft sidewall tires on their tow vehicles to achieve a better ride when they're not towing and that contributes to a lot of handling characteristics when they're pulling a trailer causes the back of the vehicle to wave back and forth again proper tires is another contributing factor to how safe you can tow so bear that in mind whenever you're having your setup and whenever you're getting buying new tires trailer tires or truck tires that if you're pulling a lot get a good sidewall tire that's made for doing that um, so I'm a little out of, out of sorts now. Brad, you have to bring me back in line. As we're back to what happens when we start swaying. Uh, so, last slide. So um, we, we went over um, most of it, but there was just a, a couple of general rule of thumb um, notes on what to do when you start to notice your trailer is swaying. Got it. Okay, so you're pulling down the road, and again, what you have to realize is when the trailer starts to sway, what happens is the trailer is traveling faster than your tow vehicle. Two things you can do. You can slightly accelerate so that the tow vehicle and the trailer get back to matching speed, or you can manually work your electronic brake controller to slow the trailer down, which will also straighten it out immediately. Most people don't realize that you can do that. And that's why most electronic trailer brake controllers have a manual override, because if you manually override your, your rear brakes when you're in a sway, it will straighten the trailer right out. And the first time it happens and you do it, you'll be totally amazed how fast it straightens it out. Now, I don't advise you going to full 12 volts and locking them up. So slightly apply brake, electronic brake pressure to the rear brakes of the trailer only manually. And that will also straighten the trailer out immediately. Remember, the trailer is going faster and farther than the truck. Um, and if you, you're in a you got to reduce your sway. I have a lot of customers call me and goes, oh my God, I can pull this trailer 85 mile an hour with everything in it. There's a point where you go, okay, well, I hope you can stop and you're staying in control going that fast pulling that rig. But we're all race car drivers, so we all want to get there in a hurry. I get it. But sometimes you got to slow down just to be a little more safe. When you're in a condition where it starts to sway a lot, the biggest thing is to stay calm like i said apply some manual brakes with your electronic brake controller and lift a little off the gas again you have to match speeds the biggest difference is the trailer is going faster than the tow vehicle so you have to get those back in sync and they'll straighten out um, side wind and side forces uh, what they call bow wind from oncoming traffic uh, that all has contributed to having a good sway control device it may wave a little and then come right back in control as the device works. So as you can see, this subject is for the master class and I recommend that everybody take it. it we get much more in depth and I, I get much more in detail on what to do and how to set it up and how to measure and how to install your weight and sway control device properly, making sure that everything is level, uh, loading your car and strapping it down and making sure your tongue wakes proper. 
So I can see, Brad, that I've rambled on quite a bit, so I apologize. So make sure we have time for questions. So. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so we do have a couple of questions, but I, I wanted to um, thank you um, for that because it's this is really valuable uh, information, particularly for people that you know are fairly new um, to towing. Because a lot of a, a lot of you know folks are. Um, I don't, you know, I drove a, a, a big truck with a trailer. Um, for several years and I did it fairly regularly and um, you know in the last 10 years I haven't driven a, a truck with a trailer on the back of it at all so you know practice makes perfect um, but you know you always need to be cognizant um, you know of trailer sway and um, you know when you're when you're running a tag trailer it's different than running um, you know, a gooseneck or a fifth wheel uh, type of trailer. And, and so one is obviously a little easier than the other. And I drove, um, you know, a big, you know, 30, uh, I don't know, gosh, it was almost 40 foot trailer, um, you know, and it was a gooseneck um, or, you know, a fifth wheel type of hitch. And, you know, those are fairly easy to drive. But when I was driving a tag trailer, I, I'll admit that I was not very good at it because I was, I, I didn't do it. Um, and, you know, there was a major, major um, difference. And so we, we've got some good questions from uh, viewers today. And the, the first one is Bob Jones, who's a, a Speed Therapy Academy alumni member. And so he's seen um, uh, more than one of your master classes, probably. But his question is, is there any maintenance required on those sway control devices to maintain their friction or performance? Yes. On <clears throat> if he's talking about the separate fr friction control device, th those those pieces have a material. Uh, I don't think it's asbestos anymore, but they do have a friction material that over time will wear out and then will have to be replaced. You always want to use some good anti-seize in different places so that um, when the devices are uh, or lithium grease or something on the ball and on those devices, but actually on, on the sway control devices themselves, they actually have a material in there like a brake shoe material or an asbestos material that will wear out over time. So over time you'll have to keep tightening and tightening and tightening it up and then to, they'll be to a point where just like brake shoes or brake pads they will be worn and you'll have to replace the device itself or whatever brand you have if they have those available you'll replace those i, I hope okay. that answers and so yeah no i think that that was that was um that was really good and so our our next question is from Joe Johnson, who's um, another uh, Speed Therapy Academy alumni member. And so his question is, um, isn't using a gooseneck trailer the very best option? I have had problems with trailer tires blowing out. Most tire dealers will not put like truck tires on trailers. So it's like, like three different um, comments sort of questions. Sure, yeah, to answer, to answer Joe's question, yes, goosenecks, pull completely different and all of the gooseneck customers will attest to the fact that a gooseneck pulling a gooseneck completely different the, the attaching point to the tow vehicle different location that's a whole different animal than a bumper pull the majority of us are bumper pullers so that's what we kind of tend to lean to giving information to the people that pull bumpers that are bumper pullers but yes a gooseneck by far if you have the capability um, for a gooseneck and, and have gooseneck trailer. That's the very best solution, hands down. Um, that's correct. And <clears throat> if you've had tires or tri problem with trailer tires blowing out, be sure to make sure that the tire, again, adding your, getting your total trunk, getting your total trailer, loaded trailer weight, making sure that the tires have the, have matching capacities for that. Um, there is a lot of trailer tires on the market now and we use the term in the industry called steel carcass trailer trailer tires and instead of like radial tires that have steel belts or nylon belted these are steel carcass in other words the, the entire carcass or the entire surrounding of it is a steel carcass tire 
heavy duty, you know, go 10, 12, 14, go to a higher ply tire or a bigger tire. But it's matching the tire to the weight and making sure that the tire is properly inflated. Another thing that can contribute sometimes to the tire failure is if the axles of the trailer have never been rechecked and over time and hitting bumps and bouncing off curbs, you can actually jar the tire, the axles off a little so you're going to be tracking. So sometimes you'll wear on the inside and outside, it's just like having your toe in and out on your car. You'll wear on the inside or outside. So that can create the tires to overheat a little bit too. So I hope that answer okay, goes so on, on the subject of tires, then Bob had um, another really good question. I'll post it here. Um, is there any markings uh, on a, or it, is there any marking on a tow vehicle tire that indicates its sidewall stiffness or perhaps a load class for the tire? Yeah, all most all tires, DOT rated tires, and almost all tires now, will have an actual weight capacity. So if you see on the tire, it will say maximum load at, at a maximum tire pressure at maximum load. So that is on the tire itself. Um, the DOT is now requiring that on tires. So it will say maximum load. Now that's per one tire, just that tire. So it may say maximum load 4750 on this tire at 50 PSI or that whatever specific number that is. Um, but that is designated on the, on the actual tire itself. This diagram here, unfortunately, we don't have that load rating on this this talks about the sizes and the sidewall and what it is but um, if you'd like that information i can always forward it to you and show you give you pictures and examples it's not a problem it is out there and the tires will have it i usually got to get you got to get down there and look for it but it's imprinted on the side hey jim I, I have a quick question for you can you hear me yeah uh jim can you hear us Did we lose you? Can you hear us now, Jim? We've got no audio for Jim. Okay, Jim was having a little bandwidth um, issue earlier. And so it looks like he's having some, some problems in the studio. Okay. So there we, Jim, go. We, we, we know we yeah yeah we realize that we're probably going to have to move on uh, because unless his audio comes back and um, Jim, we thoroughly enjoyed Jim today. Um, if you put in the comments, he'll be able to see that that you appreciated him coming on and sharing his knowledge. Um, he said I could hear Brad Grissom and Rich Cottrell. Yeah, okay, Tim, that that's good information. Um, and it looks like Tim Allen has another question. Brad, I don't know if we want to go through and uh, just ask that question, even though he's not there. That's a, yep, this is a pretty long one. Um, Carrie, can you read that? Uh, yeah, sure. Ford has a, a pretty great VIN based load slash tow simulator generator. It's pretty great helps to show how much load your truck is rated for with for with different payload passenger load tire temps and weight uh, weight rating that's a tongue twister let me see if i can find the link they sent me have you seen it it's pretty cool also most problems oh think, sorry okay <laughs> so most probably uh, think their truck is rated to haul tow a lot more than it actually is good information yeah there. And, and so that is a, a is a really good um, point. Um, you know, people think they can load these things up, and you just can't do it. Um, um, you know, regardless of regardless of the the uh -huh. rating on the vehicle itself. So the manufacturers do have um, uh, a good, um, I guess, a lot of information about that. And so and so some people don't know. And so you, uh, there is a VIN lookup or a VIN based um, simulation generator. I wish we could hear um, Jim. I wish we could hear Jim because he probably knows a little bit more 
about that. But I, th I think the issue might be on his end because in the studio, um, he looks pretty, pretty good. Um, his audio looks clear. Um, I've double checked all of the settings, so I'm not sure. Maybe he's accidentally hit the mute button. Uh, I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see, yeah, I don't see that the mute button's on. Um, yeah. So one thing we could do, if we have it, if you have other questions, we could uh, you could call him, Brad, and put him on speaker, if you wanted to try that. So we're gonna we're gonna try something with you. Uh, it looks like Tim Allen put that link up, and he'll be able to answer that in just a minute. Uh, we're gonna. Put uh, Jim on speakerphone, see if you guys can hear him that way. And if you have any other questions for Jim, please put them in the chat, and he will be able to um, answer those questions via telephone. So yeah, no, I don't think, unfortunately, it doesn't work on the phone because we're getting some echo okay. Uh, issues. Okay. Well, um, we're going to have to uh, call Jim then. And, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So we're going to remove Jim. Uh, so anyway, sorry about that, but he that was great information. If you put in the comments, Jim will see the comments uh, thanking him for his time for that mini master class. Uh, Tim, let's see, Bob Jones also said it was terrific information, and he'd like to see the full uh, master class on that. So uh, that is coming up. We'll be talking about that in another couple of weeks as far as how you can uh, attend those master classes. And it looks like Paul Drake has another link in Tim Allen. So it was probably, okay, he's just yeah, so they, yeah, they are posting up the um, links to the uh, Ford uh, trucks uh, towing guide. So Greg Drake um, posted that and um, Timothy or Tim Allen, I think he, he posted it as well, but it was in image form. It looks like I can't actually see it here in the, the studio, but, um, and Jorge says that that's, that was awesome information. So I'm going to try just to add Jim back to the stream real quick okay. and see, um, his, his audio is, is not working, I guess still. Okay. So, okay. Um, anyway, well, I think we're going to end the show. I did want to read a quote uh, from Kenny and this kind of tells you about his whole philosophy on his products and, uh, his customer service says, my life's mission and purpose is to help more people like yourself enjoy their car lifestyles by sharing the culmination of my lifetime experiences in professional racing and the high performance car building arena, helping you maximize your driving experience. And that is so, so Kenny. So I wanted to end with that. And we are playing a replay next weekend is Easter Sunday. So we on Saturday we will be playing uh, an encore presentation that Kenny will be talking about. And we will be back live the following weekend, uh, following Saturday. So, Brad, do you have anything else to share? No, I don't. I um, just wanted to thank Jim for uh, being a part of the program this week. Um, we do have some uh, special guests that will be coming up uh, after the Easter holiday weekend. Um, I apologize that we don't have any good April Fool's jokes um, today, but... Um, I couldn't find any good ones. Um, there were there were a couple of floating around about 2024 Fox Body Mustangs, um, but the the information surrounding that um, hoax wasn't very good either. So it was a hoax of a hoax. But um, so I look forward to seeing everyone. Um, I hope everyone has a good Easter uh, weekend next weekend. And um, Carrie, I don't know if you have anything else. Who, who won the, oh, I guess Joe Johnson was Joe Johnson the winner. Won, yeah, so, yeah, right. Kenny's uh, childhood racing hero, Jim Clark. Okay, we'll see you later. Uh, enjoy right. your Easter, and we will see you the week after. Take care.